why did I go steal it? He was gonna. No, I don't need it. My it doesn't kids matter. need it. <laughs> On Monday evening, a gang of about 8 to 10 teenagers tried to storm an Aldi supermarket. The store's crew quickly sprang into action to protect the premises, wielding fire extinguishers and metal poles to ward off the would-be intruders. Just shopping with my wife. We were doing our normal shopping evening as we normally do. And in the entrance doors, all you saw is around 8 to 10 youths come, come bolting through the door. They were armed with fire extinguishers, poles, crutches. They was aiming for one in particular staff member who sort of stood back but tried to wash them out of the store at the same time. Dressed in school uniforms and aged between 13 to 15, the young assailants were also armed notably with poles. In a bold move of self-defense, one employee stripped off his belt and used it as a whip to fight back against the group, a tactic soon adopted by another colleague as well. Oh my. The ensuing melee was described by an onlooker as a scene of literal carnage, leaving the store damaged as evidenced by the aftermath of the confrontation. This particular staff member who they initially targeted came back armed with knuckle dusters, already on his hands, ready to go. It was quite frightening to watch. After that, it was just literal carnage. Young, they were just, just kids. They were sort of 13 to 15 years old, maximum. Police were on the hunt for the teenage group behind the attempted invasion and assault on the store's staff. Nicole, a young woman, was apprehended for felony theft, yet she argued that her actions were due to a medical condition that compelled her to steal. After the incident, the staff told her she was banned from entering Walmart. Despite this, she expressed regret for her actions, explaining she only stole because she was hungry and broke. Nicole, welcome back. I don't want to get arrested. See you. Well, you shouldn't have shoplifted then. Please. You know what I mean? I don't want to Arrested, I have to go to work today. Please. No. So what happened, Zane? Uh, started watching her because of the merchandise and the amount of merchandise she has in the car, which is the stuff outside the door. Me. Um, she selected the cat stuff, groceries, stuff in bakery. Um, walked over to the produce wall there by the grocery door, and then turned and went out the grocery door, and I saw her on the sidewalk. Perfect. You gonna type everything for me? Yes, sir. Please. Did she get in trespass forever? Yes. That's please good. Don't Smart. Arrest me, please. I was gonna say that's a good idea. Stay seated, Nicole. Please, don't be standing up. Please don't arrest me, please. Yeah, what do we got here? Please, sir. I'm I'll be the witness. I have a work. I have to go to work today. Please. No. He promised me there was no cops involved. I catch you. You're dead. What do you want done? What do you want done? You want to? You want to forward? Get the hell off your property, or you want me to take her to holding and fingerprint her? It's up to you. I think she needs to go holding. Okay. Please, no, please. Yeah. I really gotta go to work. Please, Works sir. Nonetheless, the officer wasn't convinced by her story and proceeded to arrest her. Please, sir. Please. I yeah. want to come back Can again ever. Can you get ever. me this done tonight? Please. Um, most likely, depends on how long she was in the store. Um, for the video, entire video of the store, but I can definitely get you a statement. Please. So tell me again please, what happened. No, Sit back down. Please. I gotta go to so work. So I started watching her over in... Uh, pets. Um, she was moving stuff around in that cart. She had some high dollar pet stuff in there. She picked up the uh, scoop free pet thing and put it in there. Please, sir. Um, some kitty litter went over to grocery, picked up some cereal, um, went over to bakery, um, or went through meats, got Please. the steaks, went through bakery, got all the sweets and stuff. And then she went into produce and grabbed the sandwich there off the deli bunker thing mm -hmm. for the sandwiches and then stood right there next to the door until she thought nobody was paying attention and then turned and went right out the door. Which doors? Grocery side. Pass all points of sale. Yep, clear out on the sidewalk. Clear out on the sidewalk. Stand up. Please. There's no please. please. Stop. Can I call my mom? Stand up. Please, my mom's gonna come Stand get up. me. You can call her when we're there then. You are under arrest for theft, second degree. After being escorted to the parking lot and in front of his vehicle by the officer, Nicole decided to open up about the real reason behind her shoplifting incident. I, if I tell you something, he said if I didn't go steal it, he was gonna if I came back empty-handed. Uh-huh, go ahead and have a seat in the back I'm of the car. I'm serious, ask my mom, he abuses me. Oh, okay. Ask my mom. Okay. My mom was gonna call the cops on him. Uh-huh, okay. For threatening to snap her neck. Okay. I'm serious. While you're in the back of my car, you're being on any visual recorded by the in-car camera located directly in front of you. Thank you. 
Upon arriving at the station, the officer began questioning Nicole about her boyfriend, digging into all the details. This was part of the officer's effort to deepen the investigation and gather more information. Well, I'll go talk to him, but he might get arrested for a uh, felony harassment. I don't, I don't want nothing to happen. Here we are. I don't so, want nothing to happen. Anymore. I can't afford for you to be victimized, Nicole. After a series of questions, the officer shifted focus to the earlier incident. To refresh, Nicole had claimed to the officer that her boyfriend would harm her if she didn't commit the theft. And now the officer was keen on getting more insights into her claim from her boyfriend himself. Hello, I'm Officer Patty with the Pullman Police Department. Who are you? Garrison. Garrison? Hey, Garrison. Uh, the reason I'm here is I uh, arrested Nicole for stealing from Walmart. Did you know she was going up to do that? No. No, you didn't? Okay. Do you have an ID I can take a peek at, Garrison? Uh, I don't I lost my ID. Okay. Okay, I think that's all I got for you, Garrison. Don't... So, she's safe. Everyone's safe. You're safe? Yes, sir. Katricia's safe? Yes, sir. Nicole's safe? Yes, sir. All right. Why aren't you... Why, why'd you come up here from Virginia? Why aren't you still in Virginia? The change from what my brother did to me. All right, well, I don't... Okay, well, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sorry to hear that. It sounds like... sounds like, uh... I'm slowly healing for now. Okay. All right, well, I'm sorry that that happened. If you ever need me to talk to anybody about that or anything, you, you let me know and I'll uh, get you some local resources, okay? Nicole was caught stealing items worth $800, among them a cat litter box priced at $140, and steaks costing $40 a piece. She pleaded guilty to the charges and was sentenced to 10 days in jail. Instead of serving time, however, she was offered the chance to complete 80 hours of community service. A young woman dashed out of Walmart without paying for her items. When the police eventually caught up with her, she began acting in an erratic manner. Yes. Where are you going? Yes. Hang on. Okay, Hang on. let go, let Hang go. On. Come this way. Let go. Come this way. Please. No. <laughs> Upon arresting her and securing her in the police vehicle for the ride back to Walmart, the officer had to play music in the car to drown out her continuous wailing and screaming. This was the situation as they returned to the location where she was caught shoplifting. What are you crying for? Because I'm scared! Are you crying because you got caught? No, because I know I didn't get it! I don't know what you just said. Because I know I didn't get it! Then why'd you do it? not a very good reason, is it? No, I know. I'm sorry. Come this way. Where? Come this way. Oh, yes, it is. I'm sorry. Oh, my God. I'll pay for it all. 
In the Walmart office, the officer interrogated her about what substances she might have used and the reasons behind her erratic behavior. What is your name? <laughs> it's not a very good name. Do me a favor. Oh, why are you being Change so mean? You have to let me read. Take a deep breath. I'm being super nice. Why is he being so mean? <laughs> Take a deep breath. He said, wow, such a great right, name. Cool. That's mean. Tell me your name. You should be nice about it. What is your name? Uh, my name is Cheryl. Cheryl. While one officer was questioning her about the shoplifting, another cop found some substances in her bag. Despite this discovery, they continued to focus on questioning her about the theft, rather than shifting their attention to the substance-related aspect of the investigation. Almost. <laughs> Kind of? Yeah. Who do you live with then? It's like, I'm in between a few places right now. Okay. Chills. Smoking blues and stealing shit from Walmart. Definitely doesn't get you anywhere to budget. It is. You used to have a bathroom, right? Yeah, I used to work at Whataburger. What therapist do you go to? I don't go to a therapist anymore. Do you go to a rehab? Huh? Do you go to a rehab? No. Probably should. What happened with Waterburger? I quit because they weren't paying me enough. When did you quit? Not too long ago, right? It wasn't that. Well, it's been like a couple months, but. How much are you making now? Over. Well, not really anything. Right? None, right? No. No. So. I mean, it's because of my ID, though. I've been looking for a job, but I just I, I can't get one without an ID of a certificate or something. Nobody's going to want to keep hiring you if you keep doing that. And then you keep stealing. I can tell you that right now. And I know that, but you know, it's easier said than done. It's a little bit hard to do on your own. Once the questioning concluded, they escorted her out of the office and straight to a detention facility. As a result, Cheryl was charged with the theft of merchandise from Walmart. Did items such as a hoodie, a sling bag, and three pairs of thongs. On April 14th, 2023, cops got a call about a man and a woman allegedly stealing beauty products from a store. When the cops got there, they found the pair and stopped them from taking off. Stop. In the shade, both of you stop. I'm recording. Sit down right there. You're not free to go. If you take off running, we're going to have an issue. Sit down. Stop. Okay, sit I'm down. Do I'm sit down or I'm going to put you down. I'm going to take my, take my dog. This uh, is a truck. Here's what's going to happen. I didn't do nothing. Sit down. Look, there's my purse! Sit down, sir, or we're gonna have an issue. Okay, I just. On your butt. My dog is gonna jump please. out the truck. Just, please, where's your truck? My dog is right there, please. Is it the red truck in yes, front? Yes, yes, he's gonna run away. I'm gonna, I'm, here's Sit my purse. down and we'll handle the dog. Here's my purse. Do you understand you're, under, you're being detained right now? Yes, I understand. Do you know why? They think you stole stuff from Walmart. I know. Okay, I didn't steal nothing. There's my That's purse. That's fine. Sit down on your booty. Please, please get my dog, please. So, oh, we'll take care of the dog. Oh, please, please get my dog, please. You don't understand. Sit down. Sit down. I can't sit down. I'm out of breath. Please let me get my dog, please. Don't resist, dude, because I will. I'm not resisting, man. Well, you guys I got a broken collar. I, mean, I, I got a broken collar, bro. The male got taste because he wouldn't listen to the cop telling him to sit and put his hands behind his back. Even after being handcuffed, both kept acting up. I sit down just, now! I'm oh my God, you, man. All right, Ken, stand up. Uh, you got any needles on you? No, man. Stand up. I, my legs are f***ing up. Dude, I can't stand up. I, he just shocked the f*** out of me. I lay on the ground and he's still just shocking the f*** out of me. It goes five like, seconds. He can't stop it. My Everything good. You got any needles or anything on you? No, man, I don't have no needles. I'm busy as okay? He just shocked the out of me. My what year were you born, Ken? What year were you born? You can roll to your side. I don't know, man. I'm not used to, like, what the what, what does using have anything to do with this? Like, well, you're you're starting to act all not. I busted my head open, man. Yeah. My head is killing me. Like, what does drugs have anything to do with me busting my head open? And my, I'm dizzy and my well, legs. It has something from to do with shot. why we got called to a retail theft, right? The officer found a weapon in the couple's truck, making things more serious.
Yeah, I thought it was at first. It says DPMS on it. The man faced charges for resisting arrest, theft, and for being aggressive towards a cop. The girl was also charged for resisting arrest, but got let go with a notice. Capital Chevrolet Buick GMC of Lexington experienced a break-in, first noticed through a phone call alert. About an hour after the incident, an employee spotted the break-in signs, shattered glass, and missing vehicles. General Manager Chris Clark reviewed the security tapes, identifying the theft occurring early Sunday morning at 6 a.m. It's 6 o'clock in the morning. You can see he's still, he's over here in this one. You got two in this one that haven't left yet. He was struggling, and then this one here, he's confused on where he's gonna go. The footage revealed the culprits entering the dealership, disconnecting internet connections to block remote security, and breaking into a key machine to steal keys. We got a call that said we had been broken into. Um, didn't, didn't know what to expect. And when I took a look, I mean, I knew right then. You know, I mean, the glass was gone, the whole glass was broken. I knew the cars were gone. They come through the door, went in, disconnected uh, the internet for everything, um, disconnected all our uh, ports, and then went in and broke into our key machine, which is a lock box, broke into that and stole multiple keys. That happened about 2.23 in the morning. It definitely sucks. I mean, for us, I mean, we just lost a lot of money, especially all those sports cars we lost. I mean, it, it, it hurts us. I mean, we'll pick it up. We'll still finish strong. Very frustrated. End of the month, we're here trying to sell cars and make a living and, and having to deal with this is not, uh, not exciting. The dealership lost seven vehicles, including high-end Corvettes, Camaros, and a BMW amounting to a loss exceeding $300,000. The security video was shared with nearby dealerships to help identify the thieves and recover the stolen cars. Despite these efforts, the Lexington police had yet to arrest anyone connected to the theft. Two sisters were caught shoplifting various items and subsequently made a run for it without settling the bill. Even though one sister claimed they didn't steal anything, the officer went with a store employee to check out the security video. Sure enough, the footage showed them swiping stuff. After seeing this, the cops started digging into the stolen goods situation. Over with me. Me? Yes, ma'am. What Were you just in Burberry? Who, me? Yeah, I was looking for a baby suit. Did you leave with anything? No. So you're saying any footage that I just saw? You ain't seen me leave with anything. Oh, no. Just so you know, I'm going to read your rights real quick. No, listen, you didn't see me. You have the right to me, sign anything you say can will be used against you in court of law. Serious? Were they trying to grab it from here? From, yeah, from us. Okay. Do you guys have that on camera here? Yes, sir. We're I'll very, pull it up. Okay. Do you want to go with them to the back to see yeah. the camera? Yeah. Proceeds. I'm going to go look at the camera with them real quick. After checking out more security footage in a different room, the officer headed back into the store to slap an arrest warrant on Shantia. Give my sister my stuff here. No, put everything on you. You're down right now. Yeah, I guess so. I don't know. So what, sir? What am I going to do? For shoplifting. What did I say? You took a bathing suit bottom and bathing suit top. A you bathing put, suit? You put in your pants. It's all on in video. My pants? Yes, ma'am. I have nothing in my pants. All right, well, I'm when we get down? Period. Like, that's crazy. Well. Just get my phone. Nope, phone stays with you. Everything on you. No, I don't need it. My it doesn't kids matter. need it. Okay. When Shantia said she didn't steal from the store, the cop went ahead and gathered the stolen items to show her, proving he knew what he was talking about. This is Burberry's. We, was, uh, we didn't have anything. I didn't have anything in my pants Burberry's at all. They lied. Uh, uh, yeah, so they found... Uh, Maybe you can see the he's over there. Yeah, he's watching videos. So. Like, what? Yeah, at they this point, time, she wants to talk with us, we can just transport it back. So. I'm talking to y'all. What y'all want me to say? Uh, no, we're asking you where, where you put the... I didn't have it in my pants. Okay. Y'all think I put it in my pants? I'm on my crib. Like I had like, a big like, bloody like, pants. No, no, I understand, me. but there's cameras like literally on every little corner of this mall. Yeah, I, I get that's it. How we, that's how we knew you were here. Yeah, like, no, I don't uh, have it with me. She doesn't have it. I'm getting her. I have, I have a very big paddle. Meanwhile, the cop continued looking into the shoplifting case and moved into another security office for further investigation. The Paladins, I got the top right here. Here's the shorts, they uh, stashed them behind. One of the things I really got it on footage. Oh, perfect. That's uh, from Burberry as well. Yep. All right, and then we're going to grab the video of that. They also, I'm trying to figure out, she had this belt, she stashed that too. So She had the belt from that, Louis? That's a Louis Vuitton belt. Oh, she, she, oh, she concealed it? 
Yeah, so she, she, she pulled up herself, concealed it with the shorts, yeah. and then I guess when you guys came in, she... Wait, which one concealed it? The one with the, the bigger one, the black the shirt? One, yeah. The with the hair down? Yeah. Okay. I believe so, yeah. Yeah, all right. Before heading out of the store, the cops rounded up all the necessary paperwork and evidence related to the shoplifting incident. They even found out that Shantia had been using a magnetic security tag remover to help her steal. With this discovery, the cops took her to the station to question her further about it. Serena, remember when I asked you about anything on here? You didn't know. Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell me about your magnet? What you mean? It was in my shoe. I didn't even know it came up. Okay. What do you have it for? I own a boutique. So what do you use this for? In your boutique? Um, the snake alarm, so it's like a flag. Okay. Do me a favor, take your shoes off. in your shoe and it just fell out? It must be. It must have been in my shoe. Okay. So real quick, you have anything else stuffed anywhere? Because you're, listen, you're going to be searched by a female. They find it then, it's just going to, you're going to get more trouble, so. Okay. That's what you said before, you didn't tell me how this magnet. Yeah. And it's in your shoe. Why am I, I mean, what difference does it make? Because we know what this is used for. Well, which are you using? You don't use this at your boutique. It's not what we use it for, it's I what mean, you use I it for. I have a boutique, that's so cool. Shantia faced charges for two instances of shoplifting, having an anti-shoplifting or inventory control device, and obstructing her arrest. Despite these charges, she's currently out and waiting for her day in court. Hoi In Man was busted for hiding stuff in the front of his waistline and under his shirt, but the moment the cops approached him, he bolted. Once they caught him, the cop brought him back to the patrol car to conduct a search on him. After catching him, the cop questioned him and found out he wasn't acting alone in the shoplifting. It was part of a bigger organized crime ring. Stop running, I'm gonna tase you! Stop! 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 So it's central foot pursuit going northbound towards the, towards Hickory. Stop, get up! Do not do you understand me? Stop! Stand up! Stop right here. Spread your feet apart. You got anything that's gonna stick me, poke me, or injure me? No, I shouldn't. The officer took a moment to show the stolen goods to a Walmart employee before hopping back into his police cruiser to dig deeper into the incident. During this investigation, the officer uncovered that the man was also on the radar for an outstanding warrant. Made me run. All right, do you have everybody? Or the other guy all in black took off running, right? He took off, but I just found out that this, well, this guy was the main one at first because he had those packages right there. Yes. The female that's inside uh -huh. walked out with the merchandise that we thought she had paid for. Now she has not. She didn't pay for nothing. Hold her, hold her. I have someone else coming up. Man, you're not even tired. Deal with him. That's awesome. I'm <laughs> far, bro. Wait, you're like, usually, you know, some cops come and they're like, damn. That pissed me off. Um, can you work on getting the, the trespass card on this Hoyt Inman? Oh, yeah, there you go. Okay. Mr. Inman, we also have warrants. Yeah. I don't know, but you got like five municipal, one out of NMSU, and I'm charging you with resisting, obstructing, shoplifting, and then whatever trespassing if you're trespassed from here. So it would have gotten a lot easier. Meanwhile, the officer headed into the Walmart office to gather the necessary paperwork for the investigation. Trespass on that, yeah? Okay. And she also shoplifted. Pretty much, yeah. She didn't know, but she didn't scan items or didn't, didn't they scan items? Okay. And the other guy we got as well. Oh, good. I guess she's saying that she didn't know. This seed straight up had sh so I'm sorry. After completing the necessary paperwork for the investigation and talking to everyone involved for more details, 
the officer was prepping to leave the scene to take Inman to jail. Oh, you need property too? I'll do that at the DC, bro. Let me just put the shit away real quick. All right. Hoy, Inman was taken into custody under suspicion of theft, trespassing, and resisting or obstructing an officer. The case is still active and under investigation. Quality Save, a retailer in Greater Manchester with 21 stores, reports that every store deals with two to three shoplifting incidents daily. Thieves often go for coffee, laundry items, protein shakes, and painkillers. Surveillance footage has captured numerous individuals stealing from the stores. John Coffey, an area manager, observed, Most of the shoplifters here aren't struggling. They have food and wear nice clothes. For some, it's more like a hobby. We even had one guy claim it was his job. In Cleveland, a person got busted after swiping 31 bags of sweets from a shell station. Being a cop is tough, especially when the suspect you're trying to cuff bolts on you, hinting they're up to no good. Hey, how you doing, sir? Hey, what's up, brother? Is that your bike? Yes. That's your bike? Yes. Okay, can you come over here and talk to me? Yes. Just come over here. We're gonna go over here, right? Yes. You don't have any weapons on you, do you? No. Okay, let's come over here. Let's go on the sidewalk and talk. Okay. 21 on next Yeah. Why don't you sit down for me? Yes. Did you take anything Henry, out of the store? Young, 47, and not pay for it? Young, yeah, I, uh, yeah, yeah. You, you, you stole some stuff from the store, right, sir? It's not a big deal. Just tell me the truth. Okay, what'd you take? Some candy. Some candy. Okay. All right. You don't have any weapons on your right? You're positive? Do me a quick favor. Do you want to just stand up for me real quick just so I can pat you down and make sure you don't? Yes, sir. Okay, just come over. Oh, you're good. Just come over this way. Just put your hands up on the window, okay? You don't know your social? No. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Let's do this. Stand up for me, okay? 92874. Okay. After a chase and a bit of hide and seek behind some bushes, another officer finally caught up with him. Put your hands behind your back. Uh, oh, he's running! Well, foot pursuit! Foot pursuit! We're going north! You're gonna get tased! We got him! We got him! Show me your hands or I'm gonna tase you! Do not move! Do not move! If you move a muscle, I'm tasing you! Put your hands up in the air. Put both hands up in the air now. Put them up in the air. Do not move. Do not move. Don't move. Don't move. Turn around. Turn. Lay, lay, on your stomach. Lay, on your lay on your stomach. Lay on your stomach. Lay on your stomach. Lay on your stomach now. Initially, the cops didn't know why he ran, but a search revealed a burnt pipe in his jeans, shedding light on his actions. Why'd you run? You have a warrant. Really? Who cares? Oh my God. <laughs> For what? What, something stupid? Then why would you run? Oh, you got a crack fight too, that's why. The guy, now identified as Smith, was slapped with charges for theft, trying to deceive, blocking police work, and having substance gear. In a twist, Smith entered a no-contest plea for the substance paraphernalia and theft charges in a plea deal, leading to the dropping of the other charges. Two people aimed for a convenience store, breaking in by kicking the glass window. When one of them managed to enter, the alarm triggered, limiting their haul before they fled. Right. 
Although the police were alerted, by the time they reached the scene, the thieves had already vanished. In Broward County, a Walmart cashier got caught pocketing thousands from her till. She kicked things off by shortchanging folks handing over big bills, raking in an extra $200 to $300 daily. But soon, she upped her game, snatching between $500 and $1,000 every day right from the register. The Walmart crew got wise to the missing cash, sending undercover workers to bust her mid-theft. Sure enough, she got snagged, swiping over $1,500 just a few hours into her shift. The cops rolled up to Walmart, ready to have a sit down with the cashier, now cooling her heels in the office. It's nine, five, four. I'm sorry, how are you? Two, six, eight, seven, five, five, zero. Do me a favor, just stand up for me. Put your hands on your back. Okay. 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 I mean, is there, a, is there a back? There's a back. Okay. You want to put your car on back? Yeah, hold okay. on. Right. Okay. She was looking at charges for nabbing more than $5,000 directly from the cash drawer. But tallying up her less than two months gig, the total she might have lifted was suspected to hit around $10,000, given her daily hauls. The police geared up to slap charges on her, cuffing her after getting her side of the story and gathering up the proof. Just to have her tell. You guys can't open it? No, we are. No. We, we're asking you. What money came from the store? Just the hundred. Just the hundred, not the ten inside no. here. How, how much is there? Oh, these two, are these, there's two? On top of this? She spilled the beans about starting her sticky fingered spree in May, first swiping items to get by, then moving on to cash to settle debts. I took a couple hygiene stuff because I didn't have the money for it and I just started working there. I bought hygiene stuff and then started taking money. Wasn't going to, the only reason is because um, back in 2021, decided to open up a credit card in my name being I knew what a credit credit card was, but I didn't know how it functioned, so I played around with it. Be I was young, so I didn't know, which messed up, which made me go into debt. 21 years old in debt. How much debt did you go into? Um, I'm at five thousand dollars. So how much? First time you took money, how much did you end up taking? It, it was one something. One thousand something? It was a, it was, was it a thousand? Probably was a thousand. Okay. Slapped with a hefty felony charge for grand theft over $10,000, based on her own words and the stack of evidence from Walmart and the cops, she was hauled off to the station for booking. Her bail and court date were up in the air, depending on her past run-ins with the law and the nitty-gritty of her heist. In London, a bold crook made off with a load of beverages from a Greg's bakery, all while a store employee made a valiant attempt to thwart him, despite onlookers who merely watched without stepping in. The thief casually filled his bag with the goods as the employee juggled calling the cops and trying to stop him from fleeing. Ultimately, he managed to push past her despite her protests. What if I do? Hey, this guy's gone. This guy's gone. Yeah, man.
The incident, caught on video and shared widely online, racked up 250,000 views and led to the thief's arrest by the police. On November 11, 2023, police were called to a supermarket where a woman was yelling at customers and causing chaos. When the police met the woman, it was clear she was in for a tough time due to her actions. Oh, hey, hey, hey. So, oh no. Let me let me just talk to you. You're not you're not in uh, trouble right now, but you're a little what? No, because I'm having a hard time. My house burned down a week ago. My boyfriend smoked up me. Oh. Okay. Oh, come on. Hey, ma'am, do not walk away from us, okay? Oh, Let me talk right to you. Now. You're not in trouble right now, but we got called to make sure that you're okay and to check on I'm you because you're you're pretty you're pretty erratic right Look, now. Look, man, I was burned down a week ago. Okay. I got into an argument with somebody. Oh, okay, oh. well, talk to oh, me about it. Oh, my God. Listen, talk to me about I it. I lost my money. My boyfriend smoked up all the American Red Cross ones that we had in crack. Okay. Did and I have ten dollars in here and get some snacks. I'm sorry. I'm I'm not having this idea. Did you got your ID on you? No, I don't, but like why did he close me to his arms and I don't need this right now? Listen. Deep breaths. He's not me now to pay for this stuff for me. Well, you're not accused of stealing anything, okay? We're just checking on you because you're not acting normal. No, because I just had my house burned down. Okay, anybody but that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here, you okay? You can check with the fire department. I'm okay. sorry. It's just like anybody would be, you know, a little bit overwhelmed right now. I apologize. It's just like I'm out on the streets right now, you know? Okay. And, and all the money that you can use to help with what, you. What's your name? Julia. The officers were shocked by her reaction at the scene. She showed no regret, screamed loudly, and was defiant. Complicating the situation, the woman's behavior got worse as she threw things around for no clear reason and wouldn't talk to the police, making it harder to calm things down. Now I wait and rock every other freaking one. I told you guys would not, you guys couldn't understand any of that. How dare you accuse me of being on drugs because I'm going through a hard time right now. Neither one of you would ever be able to, to handle half the shit I've been through. And this is how I'm handling it right now. I'm not out there using drugs. In the end, despite her protests and refusal to cooperate, the police arrested her. She was loud and unyielding as the officers had to physically take her to their car. Yeah. Are they double locked? Please, no. I'm not doing Stop. Stop. I'm not doing I'm moving my ass, that's all I'm doing. Uh, yes. I'm sorry, you stop pushing me. Stop. This hurts. Stop. I didn't do anything. Uh. Hey. Later in court, she faced several charges, including causing a disturbance and verbally assaulting officers, which came from her actions in the supermarket. The trial aimed to deal with the offenses she committed, highlighting the legal consequences of such disruptive behavior and the importance of respecting public order and law enforcement. Two thieves hit the Bottega Veneta shop on Chicago's Magnificent Mile, with one crook opening the door for his accomplice, terrifying a shop assistant, before they started to swipe luxury leather items off the shelves. Within minutes, they dashed off with goods valued at thousands of dollars. This marks the store's second robbery in just three weeks, and no arrests have been made yet. In Melbourne's Keysboro, two masked robbers hit a gas station, demanding cash at knife point. Next door, Kevin Woodhouse, a 65-year-old granddad and tradie, checked out the noise from his workshop. Walking into the gas station, he found himself in the middle of the heist. Despite one robber wielding a knife, Kevin didn't back down, confronting them with a loud shout. His bold move startled the thieves. Well, I suddenly realized that I was in the middle of a robbery. And uh, at that time, uh, I decided, well, I'm in the middle of confronting this guy. I might as well keep going. He spoke in a foreign language. He didn't speak English fluently. That's the first thing that stood out. Two offenders uh, come into the service station uh, in the la late afternoon and evening, um, threatened the staff member and obviously made a demand for money. Uh, not often, no, you don't see people uh, come to the party and, and you know, show that kind of uh, bravado often, no. Don't know, just o Aussie nature. It is, it is obviously uh, very brave and used to be commended for his actions, but um, again, uh, you don't know who you're dealing with. What the hell am I doing here? I was going to confront the people who actually were making a noise out the front of my factory. 
uh, because I, I got up a bit of Dutch courage at that stage. But when I walked in and turned around, uh, I suddenly saw this chap with a, a mask on, and I thought, what have I walked into? As one tried to escape with $2,000, Kevin, thinking fast, tripped him, sending him crashing to the ground. This quick action cut the robbery short in about 15 seconds. Basically, I wanted to do something to help out, and it's the only thing I could think of at the time. I assessed basically what was happening second by second, or fraction of a second by second, because everything was over in about 15 seconds, and uh, made snap decisions. Uh, certainly not something we would encourage all the time, but he should be commended for his actions uh, on this occasion, no doubt. Not really, I'm just an Aussie. Do what Aussies do. Melbourne cops are now on the lookout for these robbers, asking for tips on a vehicle linked to the escape. Last year, a car dealership in Lexington got hit hard when thieves broke in, cracking open the key lock box with a crowbar and taking off with seven cars valued at nearly $350,000. This all went down on February 19th. Not even 10 days later, on February 27th, it was Adam's Auto in Charlotte's turn. These crooks busted through the doors and made away with a Maserati and three BMWs, racking up a loot worth around $300,000. But they didn't stop there. March 9th and 13th saw more action. Over at Modern Nissan in Cornelius, an Audi and a Dodge vanished into the night, caught on camera speeding away. Keep an eye on catalytic converter theft uh, quite a lot. And we know, you know, the, the palladium, the rhodium, the platinum inside of those things is going for, you know, from hundreds to thousands of dollars an hour. Experts are thinking these car thieves might be after the parts, especially the catalytic converters. These parts are gold mines packed with precious metals like palladium, rhodium, and platinum, fetching a pretty penny per ounce. Charlotte Mecklenburg police are on high alert, piecing together these thefts and hunting for any links between them. In the UK, a mobile repair shop became the target of a trio's cunning plan. Two of the thieves busied the owner with questions, creating the perfect distraction for the third to swipe a phone and dash. The gutsy shop owner sprang into action, confronting the duo left behind and tangling with them in a brief scuffle, but they slipped away. The incident was promptly reported to the police, who believe this trio may be behind more thefts in the neighborhood. Despite their efforts, these crooks are still at large, keeping the police on their toes. Richard Carmian, who runs Urban City Smoke Shop, has seen his store hit by thieves four times in just a few months. The latest break-in saw three guys smash their way into his shop on West Foster, leaving behind a trail of broken glass and a mess. It's hard. Uh, I can't really take that much more because uh, my insurance kicked me out of my policy because uh, they, they don't want to deal with this anymore. It's real tough, too. I'm also behind on my rent, so it's actually even being harder for me. It's not yet clear what they nabbed this time, but previous thefts have cost Carmian big time, both in repairs and stolen goods. But Carmian's not throwing in the towel. He's got plans to launch an online store and beef up his shop's security to ward off any future break-ins. A lot of the business owners are small mom and pop shops, and they are, they are surviving from month to month sometimes. Some businesses can't even recover after break-ins. You know, you gotta keep fighting through it, you know? Don't let somebody uh, tear you down and just keep working, up, work, working at it. The cops are on the case, trying to catch the crooks behind the latest incident and checking if they're linked to other similar crimes in the area. So far, no one's been caught. On a busy Saturday morning, just before 11 o'clock at 1 North Wabash Avenue, a man tried to rob a jewelry store. He was wearing a red sweatshirt and got caught on the store's cameras looking around before trying to break a glass case. A store employee, who has a permit for owning a weapon, fired at the man as he tried to run away. The cameras caught the man stumbling out of the store, then running back in to grab a small bag before he ran up the stairs to a nearby train platform. The police got there quickly, arrested the man soon after, and took him to the hospital with a wound, where he was stable. Christine, who has lived nearby for about 14 years, talked about how crime has gone up in the area recently. 
to just throw it all on the all on the responsibility of the business owners or the residences is really not the right way to go. But the crime is just escalating and it's getting worse and worse. We had kids a few weeks ago, now this armed robbery, or at least a, a gun was involved at some point. Um, but it's, um, it's a shame, it's a shame. The employee who fired at the man was also taken by the police. As they kept looking into what happened, the man who tried to rob the store is facing charges. In the middle of the day, two people walked into the Bentley Gold Coast dealership on the 800 block of Rush Street. One kept watch at the front door, while the other smashed a display case to grab some really expensive watches. According to Joe Perillo, the co-owner of the dealership, the watches they took were worth over a million bucks. Break and sound, pop, pop. So I thought it was somebody shooting, and I see the one of my our guys, you know, the full the gun. We have license, and and then it became like a mayhem here, over a million bucks worth. The folks working at the dealership didn't just stand by. They ran after the thieves from Chestnut to State Street, but still, the bad guys managed to get away with the loot. We chased the perpetrator all the way from Chestnut to uh, State Street. After this. They had to take more than a million dollars worth of watches out of the showroom, which used to be open for anyone to walk in, but not anymore. Once we find these people, they have to be held in custody. We've got to send a message to the violent criminals and to the uh, criminal enterprises that are doing a lot of these robberies that there is, this, there's no payoff there. We're going to find you, we're going to prosecute you, and we're going to hold you in jail. Joe Perillo went through a roller coaster of feelings about the whole thing starting with being really mad, but then feeling kind of sorry for the thieves. I came from a very tough Italian neighborhood in Chicago, and there were a lot of criminals there. And so I could relate to these kids. So I really, while I hated these kids Saturday, I started to feel sorry for them Sunday. I started to think they're victims. And Lori Lightfoot and Fox, without knowing, I don't, I, I don't know them, I would assume they're tr trying to do the right thing. I don't think they're bad people. I, I hated them f Saturday, but I don't hate them anymore. This wasn't the first time someone tried to break into the place. It's been hit before, showing that theft is a big problem for businesses around there. On March 20th, 2020, Richard Sultan Paul entered the Coral Bookies armed with a gas-powered BB weapon and robbed the establishment of 175 pounds. The police tracked Richard's movements via CCTV. Upon reaching Kingston Park Station, armed officers were waiting and arrested him. Richard immediately confessed to the crime upon arrest. He was charged with robbery and possessing a weapon. The CCTV footage, which was used as evidence in court, showed Richard calmly walking up to the counter brandishing the weapon and demanding cash from a staff member. Richard apologized to the staff member, stating he was desperate. The staff member expressed fear for his life during the incident, being shaken and fearful of being fired. Richard's defense mentioned his substance debt as a motive for the robbery. Despite not having the stolen cash when arrested, suggestions were made that Richard might have been directed by someone else. He was sentenced to two years and eight months in prison. Over the weekend, the Madison dealership fell victim to a slick theft operation, losing several cars from its service lot. General Manager Greg Freeman poured over the security tapes, pinpointing the break-in at 3.30 a.m. It looks very organized to me. They definitely know their way around a car dealer. The video showed a string of cars being snatched from the lot. Using a stolen Honda as their battering ram, the footage revealed two crooks hopping out, with about five more following suit. They broke through a window pane to crawl inside. Once in, they rummaged through vehicles for keys and hit the jackpot with a lockbox. Broke out one of the panes out of the window and crawled through in order to gain access into the building. And they scour the cars for keys. It's disheartening to see that people do this. In a swift 10, 15 minute spree, they made off with or damaged six cars, tallying losses between $100,000 and $115,000. Someone could probably picture the kids, or have seen these guys wearing the clothes that they're wearing, because it looks like it's everyday clothes. We're talking upwards of $100,000 to $115,000 worth of damage, 10, 15 minutes. Freeman's now sounding the alarm to other dealerships, cautioning them about these armed bandits. Typically they are armed, um, you know, so if you do see 
if you see suspicious activity or you guys, uh, other dealerships that see this story, please make sure that you guys lock your stuff up. He doubts it was an inside job, but admits these crooks seem to know their way around. Two guys strolled into a mobile shop, acting like they were just regular customers looking to buy a phone. They chatted up the staff at the counter, claiming they wanted to purchase a phone. But when shown the phone, they played the part of not having enough cash on them and handed the phone back. Except, they didn't really hand it back. While he was putting the phone back in its box, the guys sneakily pocketed the device and handed back an empty box. The staff didn't catch on to the scam, and the thieves walked out without a hitch. The shop later filed a police report, and thanks to the shop's security footage, the police were able to track down and arrest the sneaky duo. In a clothing store, a group of women asked the seller to fetch them a different size. While the seller was gone, one of the women discovered a key, opened the cash drawer, and swiped all the money. Pasadena police were conducting a retail theft sting operation at a Macy's store in Pasadena when they encountered a group of thieves actively stealing merchandise. During the theft, one suspect performed counter surveillance, while three others worked together to conceal merchandise behind each other and into a bag. Their methodical approach indicated a high level of organization. The thieves attempted to flee and even tried to ram a patrol car after stealing thousands of dollars worth of clothes from Macy's. Eventually, they were apprehended by the police. We know that these subjects are involved in numerous crimes throughout California and Las Vegas. At this time, there's more than 15 crimes that we know about. One of the suspects did counter surveillance, while three of the suspects stood together and they concealed merchandise behind each other and into a bag. The arrested individuals were identified as Romanian nationals involved in numerous crimes across California and Las Vegas. They are described as seasoned criminals and extremely organized in their operations. The suspects were arrested on grand theft charges. One of them, Vasile Balan, was also wanted on a felony warrant in Las Vegas for theft and counterfeiting. Investigators believe that the suspects were in the country illegally and had been deported before. A lot of crews will come in on visas, um, specifically, this group came from Romania. They likely entered the U.S. on visas obtained through fraudulent means specifically to commit crimes. And with those, visas are usually obtained through fraudulent means and then conduct their crimes. The crime spree by this group has been extensive, with involvement in more than 15 known crimes throughout California and Las Vegas. It's unclear how long they have been in the U.S. this time, but their criminal activities have been widespread. We're going to continue to do programs like this to let suspects and let criminals know they're not wanted in Pasadena, and if they come to Pasadena, they'll be arrested. Pasadena police, along with other departments such as Tustin Police Department and Ventura PD, are taking action against these suspects, filing charges for a string of crimes in their respective cities. Check out how these three women pull off a heist at a jewelry store. Two of them keep the seller busy while the third sneaks jewelry straight out of the display case. She grabs a tray of gold jewelry and stuffs it into her pockets. Watch her leave the store without care, walking away as if nothing happened. A group of six criminals managed to steal five brand new high value cars from the Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram of Cape Coral dealership lot. This occurred under the cover of night, highlighting the premeditated nature of the crime. One of the thieves utilized a laptop to unlock and start the vehicles, demonstrating a sophisticated understanding of the car's electronic systems. You come to work in the morning and you're violated. They're probably around seven, 10 in the morning. Like the audacity of people, like, it wasn't like they were running around trying to do it quickly. They were doing it like it was no big deal. They were doing it like it was just another day at work for them. The cars stolen were not ordinary vehicles. 
They were premium models with a combined value of nearly half a million dollars. The list includes a 707 horsepower TRX truck, a Charger Red Eye wide body Hellcat, a Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT8, a hybrid Jeep Rubicon, and a Highline Jeep Grand Cherokee Summit. It didn't steal a car. They stole high, high end cars. They stole a 707 horsepower TRX truck that just came out, Charger, Red Eye, wide body Hellcat, Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT8, which is a very rare car, hybrid Jeep Rubicon that just came out, a Highline Jeep Grand Cherokee Summit. Before making their way to Miami, the thieves stopped at a nearby racetrack. It's implied this stop was either part of the plan or an interim step before their final escape. This stop, along with their entire journey, was caught on camera. Jay Ganzi, the owner of the dealership, discovered the theft the following morning. They were tracked to Miami. Guys were prepared for sure. I look at it and say, what did I do wrong? How could I prevent this? Despite the advice of others regarding insurance, Ganzi was more concerned with the moral wrongdoing and the breach of his business's security. The thieves successfully transported the stolen vehicles to Miami, where they then became untraceable. And everyone tells me that I've talked to, oh, you've got insurance, you've got, that's beside the point. Don't take anything that doesn't belong to you. Return my cars. This indicates they had a well thought out plan to avoid detection and capture after the theft. Just before 4 a.m., a group of thieves broke into a luxury car dealership located on Mount Prospect Road in Des Plaines. Hopefully they get you guys soon. You know, karma is well known. They smashed the glass door with a sledgehammer and stole three luxury cars. The surveillance video captured the moment the thieves entered the building, with police suggesting two others may have been involved. Then they made their way, their way to the key box. They broke into the key box. They took about a good amount of keys. We're talking like 60 to 70 keys. And then they went to the back and they took some of our high-end vehicles. Des Plaines police were tipped off and arrived at the scene to see several cars driving off the parking lot. Officers followed a black BMW and a white Mercedes northbound on Mount Prospect Road to eastbound Golf Road. The incident I had back in December, they broke through the gate door, but they, by the time they made it to the key box, the mo motion sensor had detected them. They put the transporter in the hospital and they took three cars off his truck. However, the thieves managed to get away, continuing southbound on I-294. Following this latest incident, the dealership's general manager mentioned increasing security measures, including moving the keys to a different location to prevent thieves from having access to the vehicles and planning to have security guards on the premises. Walmart employees noticed a woman concealing items in her jacket and subsequently contacted the police. The decision to risk shoplifting merely a hat and gloves appears illogical, considering the high risk for such minimal gain. However, as the officer delves deeper into the girl's circumstances, the rationale behind her actions begins to unfold, revealing a more comprehensive understanding of her situation. Hi, ma'am. Do you have stuff in your coat right now? Yeah. No. Okay, employees said they saw you stuff stuff from your basket into your jacket. No, I just went and I just put all my stuff back because I was supposed to be my um, other half here and he never showed up. I just tried calling him actually. Okay, so if we search your jacket, we're not gonna find any items? No. I'll give you an opportunity right now to take everything out. But it's gonna be your one and only opportunity. If you take everything out right now, we won't even press charges, we'll just give you I think that's a fair deal. All right, there we go. I don't have an ID. Upon further investigation, it's revealed that the girl is homeless and lacks the financial means to purchase essentials to stay warm during the upcoming winter. This situation highlights a severe issue faced by countless individuals worldwide, where desperation leads some to believe theft is their sole means of survival. Considering the potential outcomes, such as a warm place to stay and free meals, the risk of theft might seem minimal. The situation took an unexpected turn when the officer made a decision that altered the course of events. Do you have an address that you stay at? No. Are you working anywhere, Jamie? It's just cold outside. I don't have any money. I just want a hat and gloves. So. Right. You don't have hat or gloves? No. I'll buy these for her. Thank you, sir. Thank you. But don't, don't do this, okay? 
I know it's tough, but there's other ways. Call us for help, all right? But if you come back in here, you're going to get arrested. I'm 47. So Again, it's cold, but 9:47 ain't worth, you know, especially like if you're out on bond and stuff. I get it. I get it. But you know, call us for help. We have resources we can help you out with. You know, every contact with us doesn't have to be a bad thing. All right. Do you guys need anything else from us? No, thank you. Okay, sounds good. The girl faced no legal consequences for her actions, and the police department praised the officer for his genuine compassion. Members of a Leeds-based gang executed a bold daylight robbery on a jewelry store in Leeds city center. The heist began with one individual crashing a truck into the store, followed by another who entered to commit theft. Fortunately, their attempt to steal wasn't very successful. This gang, responsible for the organized theft of goods valued at over 1.5 million pounds from trucks nationwide, has been apprehended and sentenced. John Kitchen and Kieran Marshall, two gang members, received additional sentences for their roles in the dramatic jewelry store Ram Raid. The gang's successful apprehension resulted from a thorough investigation by the Leeds East Neighborhood Policing Team. An individual broke into a vintage watch store in Hampstead after hours by crawling inside. He leisurely stole several high-value watches before making his exit the same way he entered. However, his period of liberty was brief as he was quickly apprehended by the police. Over several months, target loss prevention observed Dr. Melissa Ivers, an associate chief medical officer for the University of New Mexico Health System, stealing merchandise from the store. On the day of the arrest, police approached Dr. Ivers at Target, informed her that she was being detained for shoplifting, and escorted her inside the store for further investigation. Ma'am, let's go inside. We need to talk to you. You're detained right now for shoplifting, okay? Okay. Let's go inside. Okay. I'll take this. I'll take this. Hands out of your pocket. Sorry, 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 sorry. Controller? Yep. Do you have any weapons on you, ma'am? No, I do not. Okay. Let's take a seat here. Yes. Do you have a, an Thank ID you. on you? Um, I don't. No, I do not. Okay. I have it in my car. Okay. While she was in the office, she pretended to have a panic attack, acting as if she was struggling to breathe. The officer told Dr. Ivers that her detention was not just for the current incident, but also because she was connected to several other shoplifting cases. Dr. Ivers was arrested for stealing items worth about $940, which is considered a felony in New Mexico. Additionally, she received a criminal trespass warning from Target. Okay, ma'am, at this point you're going to be under arrest for shoplifting, okay? Okay. Within, within the last 90 days, you've been <laughs> catching camera, Job lifting around nine hundred and forty dollars, which is in New Mexico, is a felony. Okay, so um, you also is gonna be criminal trespass from the property. I'll give you your copy in a second. Okay, so do me a favor, stand up for me, please. Face away, face away from me. Put your hands behind you. You can fix your pants. Okay, put your hands behind your back and put your hands together like you're praying. 
Dr. Ivers was handcuffed, reassured about the non-violent nature of her crime, suggesting potential for early release, and processed for transport to jail. Where's the keys at? I think they're right on my, um, um, like right in the center console. Okay. okay. What's going to happen to my car? Is that going to happen? So we'll ask Target yeah. if they're okay, yes. if you can leave your vehicle here because today's Wednesday. And I'm going to be honest, really honest with you, Melissa. Okay? I haven't run your information yet. Yes. Right? However, in my experience, for shoplifting, even if it's a felony, it's not a violent crime. Okay? okay. So you might not be out of jail tomorrow afternoon at the latest oh Friday, God. tomorrow or oh, Friday in the morning. So it's not like you're gonna stay in jail for, oh my God. you know what I mean? Okay. I, I don't have any record of anything. Okay. Dr. Ivers expressed regret over her actions. The officers, while empathetic, emphasized the seriousness of her repeated offenses and the extensive evidence due to surveillance. Over I'm so sorry. It happens, ma'am. No, it doesn't. It's just bad. It's so bad. I'll be honest with you, Melissa. Yes. We're in 2023, Melissa. Yes. You know where's the only place that they don't have cameras? I don't know. In the bathroom. Uh -huh. There are cameras all over. Uh -huh. We have cameras. Yes. They have cameras all over the, yeah. the store. The only reason why you haven't been detained or under arrest before is because when they have called us before, we've been busy. Yeah. But they've been looking for you. Ultimately, Dr. Ivers was enrolled in a pre-prosecution diversion program to avoid jail time, given that this was her first arrest, as stated by the Office of the Second Judicial District Attorney. On March 26, 2022, Kohinoor Jewelers in Leicester, UK, was targeted by a gang, including Thomas Bernie Jones and Callum Cumas, who shattered the store's front display using a hammer and pickaxe. They fled in a stolen car, driven by 48-year-old Eugene Alexander, with approximately 40,000 pounds worth of Indian bangles and a necklace. The police were promptly at the scene, where the business owner had already pinpointed the getaway car's registration. This led to a police chase that ended with the suspects abandoning the vehicle and attempting to escape on foot. Stay there! Get in, no! Get in! Stay where you are, you're gonna get sprayed! Get in! That is where I can see him now! However, they were quickly apprehended by the officers. Give me your hands, why are you running? Yeah. All right, moment time, you're under arrest on suspicion of robbery. Okay, you don't have to say anything, but it may harm defense, do not mention. An armed burglar wielding a knife broke into a co-op store in Plymouth. While he was scoping out the store for items to steal, an unsuspecting employee walked in. Upon encountering the employee, the burglar overpowered him, wrestled him to the ground, and stole his personal belongings before fleeing in his escape vehicle. As of now, this individual remains at large and has not been apprehended by the authorities. A KRQE investigation revealed that Vanessa Santayanis, an officer with the Albuquerque Police Department, faced charges for shoplifting at two separate Target locations in Albuquerque. The case unfolded when Target's loss prevention team at the Coors Boulevard store in northwest Albuquerque caught Santa Lanes engaging in ticket switching, a method where more expensive item price tags are swapped with cheaper ones to reduce the purchase price. Her name is Vanessa. Santianas? Yeah. That's her. That's some, that is Santianas. So what do you have? Tell us what's right. wrong. So she, I caught her um, ticket switching through like just reviewing and everything. Basically she just ticket switches like it's personal care stuff. Surveillance captured Santa Lane's altering tags on personal care items, leading to a $67.90 saving by using 50 cent tags from plastic cups. In another incident, she was filmed exiting Target with switched price tags on products like face cleanser and deodorant, amounting to a $22.87 theft. She also goes between here and Paseo. Additionally, at a Paseo del Norte location, Santianes bought items worth $200, but switched tags on shoes, 
stealing another $35.98. How did you get information she was a uh, Albuquerque police officer? So obviously like I did uh, type the name on Google and everything. What I kept seeing was patrolman, second class and everything, and Albuquerque police. And okay. So I assumed maybe she was an officer. Loss prevention specialist Ty Hunt recognized Santelani's as a police officer through online search and noticed her use of a government vehicle. In total, Santelani's was accused of stealing $159.73 across both stores. To prevent conflict of interest, the case was handed to Attorney General Raul Torres's office. It's not the most serious case that we have in terms of the dollar amounts involved, but we take it very seriously just because of the the breach in public trust for, for somebody that serves in that role. Okay, do you want to talk to us or? Yeah, maybe, not let me, really. Let me kind of present. What's going on? Yeah, is that you? That's me. Okay. This one specifically is on uh, April 30th. Mm -hmm. And that, you're saying that's you, right? That looks like me, yeah. Okay. I don't want to talk about this. I don't feel comfortable talking about this. Okay. I don't want to get no. caught up in something that, you know, I didn't do. Right. This isn't something that I would do. This is a pretty, frankly, sad case where you have somebody who has taken an oath to uphold the law, who's been caught and accused of, of committing criminal violations like this. You know, hopefully we can secure a conviction and get the kind of accountability that everyone in the community expects. Despite initial reluctance to address the claims, Santelani's resigned from the APD in January with her law enforcement certification pending review by the certification board. She now faces four misdemeanor shoplifting charges. On March 25, 2022, officers responded to a report of an ongoing retail theft operation. They located the suspects in a parking lot. Mayor, yes, she's running. You're done. I'll tase you. Drive. I will tase you. I didn't do nothing. I will tase you. Turn, turn the car off. Turn the car off. Turn the car off. I'm inside the car. I don't have nothing. I don't have nothing. Turn the car off. Okay, I'll come out. I'll come out, but I'm going to record this. No, no, no. You stay right here right now. The car. No, wait. She got to put it in park. Get out of the car. Stay right right there. You stay right there. Not you, ma'am. What's your first name? Tamara. I don't have nothing. What's going on? I don't know. I don't have. That's what I'm trying to figure out. That's why am I getting? Why am I getting? Why is I'm getting pulled out the car? Why am I getting pulled out the car? All right, Tamara. My I'm just Dan. trying to see what did I do? Well, explain that. Okay. You just don't run. That's how people get you hurt. You scared me. Put your phone away. There's a policeman talking to you right now. Okay, I just want to. I'm sorry. Put your phone down. Okay. Explain everything in one second, all right? We're gonna be cooperative with you. We're not here to hurt you. Okay. Anything, okay. I don't yep. have nothing. Okay. We're not here to hurt you. We're just here to explain what's going on okay. in a second. What's well, my sergeant? He's okay with him. You're oh. good. I'm going to go make sure yep. the sergeant's okay. The police then detained one of the suspects, who then accused the officers of acting based on racial biases. Why am I getting arrested? Why am I getting arrested, though? Why am I getting arrested? Why am I getting arrested, though? Why am I getting arrested, though? Why am I getting arrested? Why am I getting arrested? What did I do? Why am I getting arrested, though? Listen. Why am I getting arrested? I'm trying to explain it to you. Hang up the phone. Don't hang up my phone. Hang up the phone. I don't want to hear about the wall right now. What are you guys doing? I don't know. What am I this getting one? arrested for? What am I getting arrested for? I'm going to have you walk around this side. Why am I getting away with my phone? Can I get my phone? Yeah, we got your phone. Okay, get, get my phone. You will. Face you the, the squad car. All right. Do you have anything on you that's nope, going to stop you from me? Anything nope, like that? Nothing on you? Nope, nothing. No? Nothing. Make sure my windows slide. Uh, my nothing. Is y'all body cams on? Yes. Are y'all body? Because I'm black and I'm a female. Did you say that? Because I'm black and I'm a female. You're the only one who said that. Because I'm black and I'm a female, so what am I, why, why am I suspected of something? Why am I suspected of something? Watch your head. Following this, the officer tried to clarify the situation to the other woman. Okay, so I'm saying like it's So right now you're stopped and now yeah, you're yeah, not arrested. I understand, yeah. Because you're cool well, you didn't at first, but you're cooperating right, now. Right. Okay. Once we allow those other communities to continue with their investigations right. of what allegedly happened. Right. And if they determine that you and her are the ones that did it, then we'll be well, police will be arresting you. I don't know which town, maybe both. Okay. All right, yeah. so she's under arrest for obstructing because you gave her, you're in an investigation, you gave her lawful order, knocked it off. She said no, mm. enough is enough. Sure. Okay? Amen. So the, she's now being cooperative. Initially, she took off as soon as she saw me and I gave her an order to stop. She ran at a car and she's yep. screaming at I her. 
Take off, take off, take off. Okay. But we're good. But we're okay, good now. Okay, okay, okay. But we're good okay. now. I'll tell you this. In 28 years, that's not a normal reaction. Okay. I ask people to stop all the time. Okay. And they stop. Okay. Shortly after, the officer escorted the detained woman out of the vehicle to identify her. All right. We step you out here for a second. Okay. okay. And then we just got to walk to the middle of the roadway and uh, just use follow my instructions, okay? Now what am I doing? This is just a show up. We got to have uh, somebody take a look at you. Okay. 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 So go ahead and step on it. I'm walking right over here, okay? Okay. Okay, come on. Okay, good. Wait, what's going on? Just look we're going to walk over here. Oh, God. Woo. That's cool. We'll walk over here. Yep, and turn with me. The other woman was also taken for identification. So we got to walk you over here, if you could, walk with us. If you could take your mask off, we'd greatly appreciate that. Good? Okay. Go over here. And then you can stop right there. Okay. Then go ahead and turn and face me. Good. Turn around and face that car. Turn around and face Officer Zelensky. Turn around and face that squad car again. Okay. All right. So. Eighty-three right now. Yeah. All right, my dear. Yep. Okay. So we're gonna. You're gonna be placed under arrest. We're gonna. Okay. Okay. Do me a favor. I don't want you to turn yet. One specific way. You said you were in a car accident, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna put these on, and I don't. Yeah, keep your hands turned. Okay, so I'm gonna try and make sure that they're comfortable on you. Wait, no, you got fifty seconds. Go ahead, tomorrow. Yeah. Right, Watch your head. Can you make sure you get my purse, please? Yeah. Get your purse. Okay, do me a favor. Turn your face this way, cause I'm gonna reach and grab this. The incident concluded with both suspects being taken into custody and facing charges related to the retail thefts and other related charges and one in particular was charged with obstruction of identification. Andrew Pakulski and Lee Barrett, armed and dangerous, targeted a co-op store, creating a scene of terror among the staff and customers by firing with a weapon inside. Amid the chaos, Jill, the store's manager, stood out for her bravery and leadership. Despite the frightening situation, she prioritized the safety of her team, a testament to her 30 years of dedication to the co-op. CCTV footage captured a poignant moment after the incident, where Jill comforted her team, showcasing her relief and protective nature. Jill's quick thinking and ability to recall critical details played a crucial role in the capture and conviction of Pakulski and Barat. Pakulski was sentenced to five years and four months, while Barrett received five years and eight months. The heroism of Jill, along with her colleagues Luke Searston and Adam Wolfenden, did not go unnoticed. At a ceremony led by Chief Constable Peter Goodman, their courage was formally recognized. Luke and Jill were awarded for their bravery, with Luke facing a wound and Jill confronting the robbers, and Adam received his accolade at a subsequent event. In the early hours of September 27, 2018, a group of thieves targeted a co-op store in St. Ives, Cambridgeshire. With the aim of stealing an ATM, they employed a stolen JCB digger to forcefully remove the cash machine from the store's wall, showcasing significant planning and resolve. After prying the ATM free, the group split, making their escape in two different vehicles to better their chances of evasion. The police tracked down the culprits to Wentworth, near Ely, Cambridgeshire, 22 miles from the crime scene. During the police intervention, the driver of the getaway truck tried to escape on foot but was ultimately abandoned. A critical mistake by one of the thieves, who dropped his balaclava while fleeing, allowed the police to collect it for forensic testing. This led to the DNA identification of one of the gang members. However, despite this success, three others involved in the theft managed to escape and are still free. In Manchester, a pair armed with a knife and what appeared to be a bat hit a corner shop. They demanded the cashier to open the register. Out of fear for his safety, the cashier complied, allowing them to snatch the cash. They didn't stop there, they also grabbed the cashier's phone. Now. 
Although the store reported the crime, these thieves are still at large, having evaded arrest so far. Late on a Saturday night, three men wearing masks broke into a service area, making off with five vehicles. This heist was just the start of their crime spree. It started Saturday night, they broke into the business and uh, started taking vehicles uh, Saturday night. We think probably only about five left Saturday night. Uh, we believe Saturday night, uh, based on video, that they came in with three of them. Um, they left with about five vehicles. They were able to shuttle out of there. And then uh, I don't know if greed got to them, but then they came back the next night with uh, five or six accomplices and went at it again. Driven likely by greed, they came back the following night with an expanded crew of five or six. This time, they escalated their efforts, stealing an additional 12 vehicles, bringing their two-night total to 17 stolen cars. You have 17 cars uh, at this point is what we believe are missing. The thefts were uncovered early Monday morning when Minneapolis police, responding to a separate call, found a man passed out in one of the stolen vehicles. Inside the vehicle, they found several key fobs. This discovery led to the man's arrest and alerted the dealership to the break-ins. They tried to make contact with that individual. He started ramming into their police cars. They took him into custody and they found out that he was in a stolen vehicle and he had a bunch of key fobs from Brookdale Luther in Brooklyn Park. The vehicles had been stored indoors with the keys inside to protect them from potential hail damage, which unintentionally facilitated the theft once the burglars broke in. We had to inclement weather coming with the reported hail, and so the business put their vehicles inside the service area, so inside the building, you will, and they put the keys with each car. And so uh, basically, once they broke into the building, they had access to all the cars and all the keys uh, that were in each car. So far, one suspect is in custody, and five of the stolen vehicles have been recovered, four of which were abandoned. You see a brand new vehicle, Jeep, and it has no plates on it, and it's, especially if it's parked on the side of the vehicle or the side of the road or abandoned in an unusual place, we're asked to call 911. Police are actively looking for the remaining 12 vehicles and the culprits behind these bold thefts. Lorraine Williams, 51, with a record of shoplifting, was handed a criminal behavior order in May 2022 to prevent her from entering certain shopping areas and stores due to her repeated offenses. Ignoring the restrictions, Williams continued to steal, captured on camera taking hundreds of pounds worth of items from stores she was explicitly banned from. In one incident, she nonchalantly filled a cart with clothing and exited without paying. In another, she was seen stealing food items. These acts not only involved theft, but also violated her CBO terms. After being caught for these recent thefts, Williams confessed to her actions. The court then mandated her to compensate the affected stores with over 1,000 pounds, serving as restitution for the losses her shoplifting caused. Late one night, a gang orchestrated an ambitious theft targeting an ATM, employing a crane and two getaway vehicles for the heist. Utilizing the crane, they forcefully removed the ATM from its foundation, then quickly loaded it onto one of their trucks before fleeing the scene. They abandoned all three vehicles miles away from the location of the theft. Upon discovering the vehicles, which were confirmed stolen, the police found themselves back at square one with the criminals still at large. Hold on to our final clip, which is the most scariest and most creepiest one. And if you like what you saw, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on our creepiest videos. 
a gang spree of criminal activities across Buckinghamshire to Hampshire resulted in the theft of goods valued at over 1.2 million pounds, damages to properties and vehicles amounting to 1.8 million pounds, and a staggering 1.5 million pounds in lost business revenue. The cumulative impact of their crimes totaled approximately 4.5 million pounds. The ringleader, 36-year-old Darren Easter, along with cohorts William Connors, 29, Anthony Rodwell, 33, and Sebastian Nip, 37, were implicated in 55 criminal acts, including burglaries, vehicle thefts, and ATM break-ins. Their modus operandi centered around bold and brazen tactics, using stolen heavy-duty vehicles like Range Rovers and Land Rovers to breach premises, followed by swift escapes and high-performance cars disguised with stolen license plates. The gang executed loud and forceful raids, employing a range of tools from angle grinders to sledgehammers hammers and chains to access ATMs and safes. On August 19, 2022, amidst a raid on an Esso Tesco store in Caversham Police, who had been monitoring the gang for six months, successfully captured them after a confrontation. The gang confessed to their involvement in a string of burglaries and thefts from November 14, 2021, to their capture, leading to their collective sentencing of over 20 years in prison, with the length of individual sentences varying by their level of participation. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can stay updated with our latest videos.